the Atlanta Falcons, you know, they went seven and ten last year, but a lot of people like me thought that the Atlanta Falcons were going to be one of those bottom feeding teams um, this past season and competing for, you know, at least the first, second or third overall pick in this upcoming draft. Um, I personally predicted them to win a minimum of three games. Yes, <laughs> those were my expectations from back in July. Um, a lot of reasoning for that was because, you know, they got rid of longtime but aging starter Matt Ryan. And, you know, they didn't really have an answer at quarterback. You know, they got Marcus Mariota um, in last offseason. And they also drafted third uh, at third in the third round um, Desmond Ritter from Cincinnati. Um, but you didn't really uh, see a lot from Desmond Ritter um, in Cincinnati, even though he out of the weak quarterback class from that draft, he seemed like the most kind of ready ish. Um in terms of that weak QB class. But even then, you know, you still had a roster that was still ripe with short-term options all around through their limited salary cap. And overall, you know, this basically was supposed to be like year one of a rebuild-ish, uh, trying to establish a culture under second-year head coach Arthur Smith. And, you know, perhaps maybe even trying to know if Desmond Ritter could be a long-term option for them. Well... Looking at this 2022 for Atlanta, I, I guess you could say half of that worked out for them. Maybe? You tell me. Because, you know, despite the already mentioned roster issues, Arthur Smith and his staff, you know, he made them somehow made the most of it again. Especially on offense. You know, Marcus Mariota looked okay for the first half of the year. And at times, you know, it looked like he could resurge back into the player that he was when he was a rookie with the Tennessee Titans. But again, he, he had those moments where he turned the ball over. Um, and then the running game was probably perhaps the biggest positive of this group. Um, when Cordell Patterson was, yeah, he was the engine of the offense yet again. But when he was out with injury, and even when he was when he came back from injury, it was the backup running backs of Caleb Huntley and Tyler Algier that did really well. Um, and Algier managed to like rush over like <laughs> rush really well um and and even had like a couple of hundred yard games as well a uh, rookie receiver drake london performed really well um he he with great speed reached for the ball perhaps maybe he could be at one of the top receivers in the league um but I, maybe that's a bit of a stretch and this is despite not having kyle pitts um for much of the season um and that's kind of unfortunate for them uh, the offensive line, though, it still had its patches, but uh, right tackle, Karen uh, McGarry, um, center Drew Dalman, they did well in run blocking, pass protecting, uh, something that Atlanta has lacked in the last in the last few years. Lin Chris Lindstrom also got a Pro Bowl nod. Um, defensively, um, you, you know, there's a lot of areas of improvement. Um, the, the pass rush, d defensive end Grady Jarrett didn't really get much help. Um, inside linebacker Rashawn Evans and corner AJ Terrell, you know, they were kind of like swarms, um, you know, in the Hornets nest, um, made really good plays, but outside of that, not really much else. It just felt like Atlanta could use a couple more starting pieces to support their good players. And, you know, look at their season as a whole, you know, they overcame an 0 2 start to the season, you know, played some good football against well, actual playoff contenders like against the Seattle Seahawks and the 49ers. And they even cut it close to Tom Brady and the Bucks at one point early in the season. And what ended up being a very weak a a NFC South. They even surpassed the Bucks at one point because they were playing so bad. Uh, the Bucks were playing so bad. So, yeah, I mean, it looked like at one point the Falcons were actually going to win the division. But they went four and four at the midway point, um, and they started falling apart uh, after they lost a heartbreaker to the Chargers, and they were embarrassed in prime time against by the Panthers. And a lot of that had to do with the inconsistency of Marcus Mariota and his limitations glaring up again. Um, so after their bye week, um, Arthur Smith elected to bench Mariota for Desmond Ritter. Um, he was pretty much like phoning in the season. And, you know, he wanted to see what Ritter had to offer. I mean, for Ritter, you know, he looked 
rough in the games that he played because, you know, when you start your rookie, like literally four games in, <laughs> four, with four games left of the season, of course he's going to look rough um, because, well, you didn't start him earlier because I don't know why you didn't. Uh, but anyway, uh, against the Bucks backups, you know, he looked a little bit cleaner. Um, he also threw his first and second touchdowns of his career. So, I mean, you, you can't necessarily go into 2023 like with commit, committing to Ritter too much. You might need another option at QB. But overall, Atlanta went 7-10 and 10 again in 2022. Um, but they're dead last in, the, in what was a putrid division. Um, but I don't know. What can you really make of it? What can you really make of this team right now? I mean, yeah, they, they were in a putrid division. They almost... Could have won a future division. Um, but this could either be a launching pad um, for what's to come, or maybe not. Because with the Bucks perhaps blowing things up, it can be wide open. Things can be wide open for, for Atlanta in the NFC South, depending on how things play out for the front office. And they have a good amount of money to spend this offseason and a top draft pick. Let, let's get into that right now. So the Falcons have a solid amount of money to spend. They have around $56 million to spend. And they have the eighth overall pick in, in the NFL draft, if I'm correct. So not a bad, not a bad idea. Not a bad ideal plan for the Falcons um, this coming offseason. And looking at some of the key free agents, you know, not too many to, uh, to note of other than Rashawn Evans and Isaiah Oliver at corner. And I guess Bradley Pinion, Niners fans may be familiar with them. Um, and looking at some of your needs to address this offseason, obviously the two big names you want to resign are the ones I just named, uh, Rashawn Evans and Isaiah Oliver. And then you want to use perhaps the NFL draft, maybe not your first round pick, um, but maybe the later rounds of the draft, whatever you have, to stock up on defense. Maybe you could find somebody um, in the later rounds to bolster up your defense and then then you want to answer the question maybe at number eight um or maybe in the second round do you want to um get, grab another quarterback do you want to invest that high in grabbing a long-term answer quarterback because again you don't really know what you have in desmond ritter yet and maybe you want ritter to compete with somebody we'll see um, and then obviously you want to retool the offensive line because, yeah, I mean, they were okay in pass protection, but you know, always want to have competition up front and you always want to protect your quarterback. So for, for Desmond Ritter, obviously you, you only have a bunch of a sample size, um, with the final four games that he played, but I think that the Falcons should bring in a little bit of competition for him. Um, if the Falcons believe he can be their long-term starter, then again, Bring in some competition for him. Um, use this offseason to fill a good amount of their key areas. Um, and unlike, you know, again, unlike years past, they have the cap space. They have nine picks in this NFL draft. So the front office and the coaching staff have plenty to work with. And if they're able to track quality players, both in free agency and the draft, and whichever quarterback shows good offseason progress, then who knows? The NFC South just might be theirs for the taking.